We now move to study two, which is part three. Now, cardiovascular diseases such as stroke account for 14.2% of disability adjusted life years and 28.5% of years lost to life due to premature deaths. In fact, since 1990, cardiovascular diseases has been the number one cause of disability and among the top two causes of premature deaths in Singapore. Among the cardiovascular diseases, stroke contributes substantially to disabilities and occur one in a thousand in Singapore. Stroke survivors in Singapore are first medically stabilized before being sent for inpatient rehabilitation within an acute hospital they were admitted to or at a separate community hospital. Once inpatient rehabilitation is completed, plans for outpatient rehabilitation at a hospital outpatient clinic or day rehabilitation center or even at the home of the patients are made. Outpatient stroke rehabilitation is important in postponing institutionalization of stroke patients and in assisting caregivers with the difficulties of providing care. Despite the beneficial effects of rehabilitation, its use remains low in Singapore. In 2011, only a third of the stroke patients referred to outpatient rehabilitation actually utilized such services right after referral. In fact, two studies showed that outpatient rehabilitation a year after community hospital discharge garnered only 28% and 4.3% participation as shown. The low utilization rates of stroke rehabilitation in Singapore may be explained by a myriad of factors, such as caregivers' desire to manage the, within the family, low perceived affordability, social stigma, ambulation and transportation issues, caregivers' lack of available time and finances, patients' loss of independence and dignity. The literature on factors for stroke rehabilitation has focused on institutionalization and efficacy on improving activities of daily living limitations. However, only two studies were conducted on community rehabilitation. Additionally, factors for long-term care service use literature has not examined caregiver well-being attributes, such as these three stated here. Study two analyzed data from the Singapore Stroke Survey, which studied the social, health, and financial experiences of caregivers of stroke patients. Data from three time points, baseline, three months, and 12 months, abbreviated T0, T1, and T2, respectively, right, were used. Right? These are time points post-stroke, after stroke occurred. Participants were recruited in the time period shown from all five public hospitals in Singapore then, ensuring it is a representative sample. This data set allowed for 482 dyadic cases to be analyzed. The eligibility for participation were as follows. The stroke patient must be a Singapore citizen or permanent resident above 40 and living in Singapore in the upcoming year and not globally aphasic. They had to be diagnosed with stroke a month before care was sought. Informal caregivers were direct or distant relatives or even friends, but has to be older than 21 years old and providing fully or partially unpaid care, unpaid care or help in any form and recognized by patients as their caretakers. No active intervention was conducted. The outcome variable was use or non-use of stroke rehabilitation at 12 months post-stroke or T2. The choice of covariates was guided by the Anderson model presented earlier. The covariates were categorized as follows and considered in subsequent variable selection in this sequence. Previous stroke rehabilitation, predisposing factors, enabling factors, need factors, and explanatory variables were added as the last block in each model. Three different models were analyzed in the stepwise binomial logistic regression analysis. Lag 0, lag 1, and lag 2 models differed by the time point at which variables were measured. For instance, lag 0 models included all variables measured at the same time point as the outcome variable, while lag 2 models included all variables measured at baseline, 
three months and 12 month post stroke. As mentioned earlier, explanatory variables were always added in the last block of each hierarchical or blockwise regression model. This allowed the explanatory power of these variables to be assessed with and without covariance. As such, model one of the non lagged and lagged analysis comprised only explanatory variables. In the non lagged analysis, model two included predisposing factors in block one before explanatory variables were added into the second and final block. In lag one and lag two analysis, three month rehabilitation use or previous use was always included in block one in models two, three, four, and five. Likewise, predisposing factors were always included in block two in models three to five, and so on. Here are the results. Caregiver depression predicted the outcome concurrently, and caregiving burden predicted the outcome prospectively in both the lag one and lag two analysis. That is model one in these analyses. Next, caregiver depression has previously been found to concurrently predict the use of a variety of long-term care before and after controlling for previous use. To my knowledge, however, this was the first study to find that caregiver depression, as you could see on that column, right, also predicts stroke rehabilitation specifically. And this is before and after controlling for previous rehabilitation use. What could explain this? Witnessing that their loved ones continue to require stroke rehabilitation without signs of functional recovery after 12 months could be emotionally distressing. This points to the importance of providing interventions aimed at assessing and tackling caregiver depression to users of stroke rehabilitation at 12 months post-stroke. While it is known that caregiving burden, the lack of time and difficulty, is associated with long-term care use in general, this was the first study that found it to prospectively predict stroke rehabilitation use in particular. Caregivers who found it time-consuming and difficult to care for a stroke patient at the three-month post-stroke time point tended to have cared for users of stroke rehabilitation later at a 12-month post-stroke. That was model two. Now, in the final models, none of the caregiver well-being attributes were statistically significant in the analysis. This shows that while 12-month caregiver depression and 3-month caregiving burden adds to the ability of 3-month stroke rehabilitation use to predict 12-month stroke rehabilitation use, a parsimonious predictive model to be used in Singapore does not require the inclusion of caregiver well-being attributes examined in this study. Among the enabling factors, caregiver employment status at 12-month post-stroke was the strongest and most consistent predictor of rehabilitation use at 12 month post stroke after controlling for all factors sorry after controlling for other factors in all three analyses this is clear evidence that cutting back on full time employment by informal caregivers are predictive of stroke rehabilitation use this finding is supported by local literature on what keeps an informal caregiver unemployed or underemployed Family caregiving arrangement is an important context in the study of long-term care service use, at least in Asian countries, where use decisions are jointly made by the patient and the informal caregiver. That patient's disability level was the only statistically significant covariate among the need factors which were added in the last block of the regressions suggests that it is a single most important factor for stroke rehabilitation use. Therefore, Patients' disability level should continue to be used as criteria for referral to outpatient stroke rehabilitation, regardless of the availability of other data. So in summary, study two found that caregiving burden and caregiver depression are prospective and concurrent predictors of rehabilitation use respectively. However, they become non-predictive in the presence of caregiver employment status.